Adam Lerner, BrooklynPhotoWorks.com, and today we are in Lightroom. And today I want to share with you guys something that I haven't actually tried up until just recently called Panorama. Now, look, most of you guys know what a Panorama is. You've seen people doing it with their phones, you know, where they grab the button and they uh, slide things along and the phone takes a whole bunch of different pictures and stitches them together and you get one long frame. Same kind of deal here. It's a photo merge. And unlike your phone, you got to do a few more steps to get it to work in Lightroom. So what I did in this case is I decided to do, rather than a linear photo merge, I decided to do more of a circular photo merge. And let me take you in here and show you guys what I mean. So we're looking at this, um, this library that I have here of images, and there's 16 images here. And it starts off with this, this image of the barn, okay? And then it goes and there's little details and sections of the barn. So what I did is I took one photo of the barn. I took a centered photo of the barn. I set my focus on the barn and then I set my camera to manually focus when I went around the barn. Now why did I do that? Well the reason was that I'd already locked focus on the barn so I did not want to change the focal, um, the fo the, I did not want to change where my focus was, meaning that I didn't want to suddenly start back focusing or moving my focus point because I wanted everything to be within the focal point of the center of my frame, which is going to be that barn. So I set it to manual focus after I had already set my focus and I moved the camera around. So I took my center shot, I went up and I went over and around and around and around and then I ended up with a total of 16 frames as you guys can see here. Now, these frames that we're looking at, these are all straight out of the camera, shot with the Fuji X-Pro2. Um, these were shot at 1 8,000th of a second at f2.5 at ISO 200. Um, the reason why I shot at f2.5 is I wanted to try to isolate the barn somewhat against the background and not have everything being in tack sharp focus. I wanted a little bit of separation. Um, everything seems to be pretty nicely in focus. Um, it's just that that damn uh, 56 1.2 lens is so incredibly sharp. I love that thing. But I didn't do any editing because I just felt like, let me take you to the final image. We'll edit that one and then we'll be done. All right, so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna select all. So I've got my image selected and I can do Apple A, or I can just hit one and then, you know, with the shift key, hold them down. All of my images are selected. And then I go into photo and I go to photo merge. And you see there's inside here, there's HDR and there's panorama. We'll talk about HDR in a second, but let's go to panorama, boom. So what it does is it brings up the panorama dialog box. And, that's, and right here, it is creating a projection. So I'm, I'm guessing that what that means is that it's, it's creating a, pro, a projected image, whether it be spherical, cylindrical, or perspective. I didn't really read up on these things, forgive me guys, but I know that from looking at them that all three of them feel a little bit different from each other. So we're going right now with spherical. Uh, I believe that from the past, I preferred the look of the spherical. It just had a more organic look. Um, cylindrical is a little bit tighter and perspective to me is a little bit longer. Um, we can go through those in a minute, but it's just going to take a minute for it to process because um, it's, it's pretty hefty. You know, we're dealing with 50 plus megabyte um, raw files and uh, we're also running ScreenFlow. Boom! There we go. Okay, so now it gives me the option to merge, but before we merge, let me show you guys. Look, here's cylindrical and you guys can see it's a little bit more cropped. Once it comes in there, it'll, it'll crop it up a little bit. I don't mind that at all. Um, here's perspective. And it just takes a little minute or two, building your preview. Perspective is okay, but there's something about the spherical that to me looks, um, looks a little bit cooler and uh, just has more vibe to it on this photo. Now this might not be the case for every photo, but on this photo. And then like, let's just take off the auto crop. And you guys can see here, this is where the uh, image overlapped, meaning that this is this, these little white areas here is where there was no information after it stitched everything together. So what it did is that it cropped things automatically. Now, I don't have to auto crop. In fact, let's not even auto crop. Let's, I, let's just leave it like, like this. Let's leave it not cropped. And the boundary warp, I have no idea what that is. Oh, you know what that is? That means that I can warp things out to the ed edges like that. Um, I don't really know. That's, that's not my thing. All right, so cool. Merge. Boom. So again, it's going to take a little while. Let's just go up to the top here. We see our little progress creating panorama. It's actually going faster than I think, and that's also while we're, we're running ScreenFlow, which is hogging quite a bit of resources from 
the uh, the MacBook Pro here, but it's it's going pretty well now. We also saw HDR in there. Now we can talk about that another time, but really quickly touching on HDR. HDR, high dynamic range. Typically if you're gonna do HDR, you wanna shoot one image that's probably perfectly exposed and then bracket. So shoot one that's maybe one stop below and one stop above. You take those three images, you merge them together with the Photo Merge app or with the Photo Merge uh, module and it'll merge those three together and then you will have an image that has a greater dynamic range. Um, the other thing that's cool about the Photo Merge app is that let's say that those three images that you're merging together in HDR were not shot on a tripod, so they're not perfectly lined up. It'll actually kind of correct all that for you. It's amazing that Lightroom can do that level of heavy lifting, but that's kind of you know where we are now with these programs. They're they're incredible, incredibly robust and uh, incredibly powerful. So here we go. Um, I can see that we've got our outputted image here. This is our image down here, the pano. And there we go. That looks actually really, really cool. Now, as you guys can see on the edges here, this is where the image did not overlap. So what I'm going to ultimately want to do is I'm going to want to crop this thing because obviously I don't want to see that stuff. So let's hit the R key. That takes us into the cropping tool. And I can go in and I can say like, all right, well, let's see what it looks like as a two by three image, two by three, three by two, you know, four by six. That's like kind of more of a standard 35 millimeter frame. And I can just go in there and just take it down so that it comes right out of there. And maybe I want to center this thing on that guy right there. Hit the R key again. Boom. That actually, that actually looks really nice. You know, that's not bad. And the, the, the foreground information here, this stuff over here, I don't necessarily know. I, look, I like this bit here, and I, I'm not missing it. I mean, I could also do a 4x3. Um, and let's just pull this guy down and just see how far we have latitude-wise like that. That's actually, actually, I'm grabbing a little bit too much of the edge here. That's pretty cool. I mean, I'm not crazy about that bit there, but that's not bad as a four by three image. In fact, that's really cool. Um, let me just look at my sky, see if I can grab a little bit more out of that. And we'll hit the cropping tool. I'm trying to grab every bit of resolution out of this puppy. And I'm kind of, I, I don't know, for whatever reason, I decided just to center it on this little bit over here. So that's pretty cool, guys, right? So there it is, that is our, our merged image. Now all we have to do is just edit this sucker. So honestly, right out of camera, it looks pretty decent. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to just grab some blacks and I'm holding down the option key to see where I am underexposed. And I don't mind underexposing a little bit in here. I don't need to see every little detail inside there. You know, just looking at the before and after, that adds a little vibe. Um, I'm just going to bring my highlights down just a hair. I'm going to add a, just a little touch of contrast. I definitely want a, a slight bit warmer. So, you know, maybe somewhere in that region. I don't want to know. It's just a little bit orangey. So, I don't know. Something like that. A little bit more daylight balanced. Add a little bit of clarity. Look what's happening with my trees when I pump that up. I mean, that is just nuts. That's crazy. Uh, I don't want it to be unrealistic, like, to a point where it's too, too much. But, um, you know, that's pretty cool. We'll add a little bit of saturation, just a little bit, to the, uh, the red in the barn, just a little bit like that. Maybe just pump up the blues in the sky just a little bit, just to get a little something like that. And, uh, you know, I kind of want to contend with this little, this little thing right here. So I'm going to use the, the Q tool, and I'm going to grab this sucker, and I'm just going to try to see if I can paint him out of there and see what happens. See if, if, if he gets selected out of there. And, you know, that's not bad. I can live with that. That's actually a lot better. Let's look at our before and after, you know. That's, that's actually not too bad at all. And, you know, look, just as a quick comparison, guys, I want to show you where we first started off, okay. Um, we got that, and we got this guy here. You know, actually, you know what, I'll even do this. I'll even take this thing, and I'll just copy, I'll synchronize my edit so we can see what they would look like. Boom. And now I'm going to do this. I'm going to isolate them or do put them in a compare mode. And look at that. Look at the image that we started with and look at our resulting image. How cool is that? That we started with this one little isolated frame and now we've got a scene. Now we've got more of a story. Okay? So let me just show you guys once again what that looks like. Boom. 
That was our initial image. It's funny, I'm actually skewed a little bit to the right, but it didn't really matter for this. Okay, obviously, as you guys saw. And look at our final image. How cool is that? I love that. I think that that looks really, really super cool. It's stellar. Um, so there you go. That's it. That is uh, creating a panorama via the photo merge module in Adobe Lightroom. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And we'll see you soon.